This video was made possible by Trade Coffee. Get 30% off your first bag of personalized, unique coffee delivered straight to your door by being one of the first 100 to click the link in the description. If you grew up with the fun kind of parents that let you stay up late, play violent video games, skip school three to four days a week, set fire to the neighbor's cat, and eat bowls of tiny little cookies for breakfast, you might remember that all the very best breakfast cereals used to include some sort of prize inside. Ever since 1909, when Kellogg's realized that plain cornflakes might be almost palatable if you bribe children with a three-page picture book, cereal boxes have been stuffed with all sorts of plastic knickknacks. Yo-yos, digital watches, lightsaber spoons, a ghost detector that doesn't even work, straight-up cash, a deed to one square inch of land in the Yukon that doesn't even have mineral rights and was repossessed by Canada in 1965, and, completely accidentally, a tiny whistle that could hack in to the back end of AT&T's phone lines. You see, back when phones had buttons and handsets and didn't waste your time with YouTube videos about cereal box prices, every bit of information that your phone received and produced needed to travel along a big web of physical telephone lines. These wires carried all of your greetings, your gossip, and your scary horror movie heavy breathing sounds, but they also needed to carry certain metadata about the call, like the number you were calling from and who you were. Since early telephone lines were only built to transport a single stream of audio, this metadata needed to take the form of audio as well. For example, if you're one of the 15 viewers of this channel who have ever touched a push-button telephone, you'd know that the phone produces certain tones when certain numbers are pressed. And no, this was not just so that you could play the first four seconds of Funky Town by typing a long string of numbers into the keypad. It was because the phone actually recorded and sent the tones to a central switching station, where they could decode them into numbers and connect the call to the right telephone line. It's sort of like how nowadays, when the NSA hears a dissenting tone, like you talking about how the United States Postal Service is kind of slow, they know to connect you with the nearest friendly neighborhood surveillance center. This system of recorded tones is called in-band signaling, and, as you might imagine, it didn't take very long for nerds to start abusing it. In the late 1960s, a group of hackers called Phone Freaks discovered that AT&T used a certain tone, 2600 hertz, to indicate that a long-distance phone line was empty. Of course, that's different to how it is today. Now, if you call them, specifically about why their retail employee literally stabbed you in your chest when you tried to buy a Galaxy Note 9, you hear a cruel tone from the agent, saying that you shouldn't have gone to the store if you didn't want to get stabbed in the chest by their employee. But back in the 1960s, if they didn't have the 2600 hertz tone, the unused phone lines would just be silent and they'd be indistinguishable from a long-distance phone call between two sad mimes who are in love and tragically separated by fate. Now, playing that exact tone back into the phone would disconnect one line, but it would indicate to the switching station that the other line was an operator, which would free them up to make long-distance phone calls without any charge. The phone freaks experimented with an organ, a few exotic birds, whistlers with perfect pitch, but the easiest way to crack AT&T's phone lines was discovered by this guy. John Draper, who realized that the Captain Crunch bosun whistle that came in his box of cereal just so happened to emit a tone of exactly 2600 hertz. Oh, and for those of you wondering, 2600 hertz sounds a little like this. So really, my point is, it's probably better that these whistles were in the hands of a criminal syndicate than the actual children they were intended for. Now, while Captain Crunch eventually stopped putting telecom hijacking tools in their boxes of breakfast cereal, phone freaking continued to evolve over the next decade or so. Many hackers began using tone-generating devices called Blue Boxes, a design that was perfected by this nerd and sold at an egregious markup by this nerd, who later dropped out of college to run a fruit stand or something like that. But before you run over to your dusty old house phone and begin blowing whistles into it, you should know that, much like beloved actor Rick Moranis, these sorts of techniques haven't really worked since the 80s. Landlines slowly became more sophisticated over the years. Bell Telephone started putting filters over long-distance lines that blocked out single-frequency tones and eventually shifted all of their hardware over to a system of out-of-band signaling where telephone lines had dedicated data channels for information like the number dialed and the identity of the person who dialed it. On top of that, many modern landline phones don't even actually use landlines at all and rely on internet protocols to send and receive data instead. So, until Kellogg's starts accidentally dropping black market Wi-Fi cracking kits into their boxes of Honey Smacks, no cereal box prize will ever quite live up to the humble bosun whistle. So, you know how when you go to a certain fish-human hybrid-themed coffee shop and you ask for coffee and they just give you coffee? That's kinda weird, right? 
It's like if you just ordered wine-flavored wine at a restaurant instead of going through a list to find one that you like in particular. Everyone has their own taste in coffee. Personally, I exclusively drink cold brew that's so sweet that it tastes like melted coffee ice cream because I am a child. Your dream coffee might be from some small local roaster far away from you, but you've just never found it. That's why Trade Coffee has you take a three-minute quiz to find the perfect match for you. For me, it suggested the Flatlander Signature Blend from PT's Coffee Roasting Company in Topeka, Kansas, among others. Once you find your matches, you'll choose your delivery frequency and then rate the coffees you get so the matches adjust and improve through time. Best of all, if you're one of the first 100 people to go to the link in the description, you'll get 30% off your first bag.